The 533 Tiny Trainer might be one of the most fun ways to get into FPV racing. It is a three inch quad, so it doesn't have the same power and speed of a five inch, and that makes it more manageable and more accessible to people of all skill levels. But more importantly, it is usually raced in a spec league against other people who have the exact same quad. And that means that if you want to get into that racing, you've got to have a tiny trainer and you've got to fit their requirements. And one of their requirements is that it has LEDs on it. You see, they want everybody in each heat to have a different color LED so people can keep track of who's who. And that's what we're going to do today. We're going to install these LEDs on the tiny trainer and we're going to set it up so that we can quickly and easily change the color of the LEDs by turning a knob or pressing a button on our controller. I'm Joshua Bardwell and you're going to learn something today. The LED kit we're working with today is from Menes GCS. There are other ones out there and they all set up basically the same. But this is the one we're gonna work with and there are links to this down in the video description if you wanna pick up this exact one. And they ship this in one piece, but you can see here we've gotta snap it apart. So we're gonna just go ahead and do that to begin with. Okay, and then we've got to solder up some wires to each of these uh, extensions. Oh, we gotta we gotta see, we gotta break it. Are we gonna break it that way? I think we do. It looks like we do. No, that's definitely scored. Yeah, okay, break that. Next, we've gotta solder up these plugs to each of these uh, extension boards. I'll just go ahead and do that real quick. I guess there's a right way and a wrong way to solder these up. All right, so on the underside here, you can just barely see it says ground, five volt, and DI for digital signal in. It looks like it's gonna solder straight through if I just go like this. By the way, if you wanna know more about this third hand tool that I've got, it's really freaking cool and I've got a full review of it and I'll put a link down in the video description. Uh, they're always out of stock, but if you can get one, <laughs> it's the best third hand I've ever used. So now I've got all the LEDs soldered to their plugs and I solder on some wires here for power, ground, and signal in from the flight controller. So here on the back side of the board, there is a five volt output pad and we'll probe that and then we'll just probe each of the five volt inputs on the, on the individual uh, boards to see that is pinned out correctly, excellent. And we've got ground, which is right here. And we'll test ground. Good. And then we can't do that test with the, D, the digital input, digital output, the DI and the DO pads because that's they're not just electrically connected like that. Are they? They might be. They might actually be. There's no processing on these boards. I bet they are. We've got continuity between all of the DIs here, um, but no continuity to the DO there. So something's in the way. Uh, but that's useful because that does tell us that all of these are wired in parallel, which is gonna come into play when we start setting these up. For the time being though, I'm reasonably convinced that I've wired them up right. We'll go ahead and solder them to the flight controller. The flight controller that I'm using is the Flywoo Goku GN745. I replaced the Beta FPV flight controller that was originally on my Tiny Trainer when it crapped out and died for no reason. At the time, I said, this flight controller looks pretty good. I wonder how durable it is. Well, it's done okay so far. Although uh, I don't fly my Tiny Trainer every day, so I don't, couldn't tell you how many packs I've actually put on it. But it's still holding up. And we download the wiring diagram for this and we see that the LED outputs are here. We've got the LED strip pad and a ground pad. And we don't need to worry about five volts or whatever because this board has its own voltage regulator and it is designed to be powered from battery voltage. So conveniently, that is right next door to the LED strip pads. It's gonna make it easy to solder up. Okay, so the LED strip is the furthest from the power pads and closest to the edge of the board. Jeez, this is so much smaller in real life than it looks like it is on the camera. Whew. Oh man, and then we gotta get at VBAT. What I like to do when I'm soldering on top of the, like, the power pad is just build up a small little bubble of additional solder and then solder to it without flowing the whole pad. And so it's a case where you will, it will want your soldering iron to be a little cooler 
so that it doesn't melt the whole pad all at once. It's kind of counterintuitive. And that is objectively a bad solder joint. It's, but it's gonna be fine and it's gonna work. Now that that's done, we gotta go over to the computer and set it up in Betaflight. I'm gonna to connect to the flight controller here in Betaflight and I'm gonna start by going to the configuration tab and I wanna scroll down and see that LED strip is turned on. If that's not turned on, your LEDs aren't gonna work. Next, we're gonna head over to the LED strip tab, which will appear when you enable LED strip. And it uh, looks like there's some stuff there. I'm not too worried about that. I'm gonna clear, I'm gonna just hit clear all and clear it all out and start from scratch. And the very first thing we're gonna need to do is map out the structure of this LED panel. You see, Betaflight can only address 32 individual LEDs at a time. And it wouldn't take a lot of math to figure out that this is way more than 32 LEDs. It's 12 per panel times one, two, three, four, five, six. So 72, yes, 72 LEDs. So how can this possibly work? And the answer is that when the LEDs are wired in series with each other, in other words, head to tail, then they are individually addressable. And you start at the head of the series of LEDs and you go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and so on. When the LEDs are wired in parallel with each other, then they all share a number. So don't worry too much about that. Well, I'll show you here, I'll show you how we map it out. What we're gonna do is we're gonna enter wire ordering mode and we're gonna start with one LED. We'll go faster as we figure out our, our process. We're gonna exit wire ordering mode. We're gonna change the function to color and we're gonna choose a color. We'll just choose red and I'll hit save. Now you may immediately see that there is an LED visible but it's not on this LED panel. Uh, this flight controller actually has four built-in LEDs and we've just addressed one of them and now we know that that LED is LED number one or number zero, it starts from zero. But let's plug in a battery and power up our LED panel and see the full picture of what's going on. So here we can see that when I turn on LED number zero, the top left LED in all of these panels lights up and you can start to predict what's gonna happen. So let's just continue, we'll just click and drag and we'll lay out six LEDs here and six LEDs here, which roughly matches the layout of our panel. Then let's just click on LED number one and we will set the function to color or, and we will pick a different color and we will hit save. And sure enough, we can start to see the pattern. Uh, basically, we have 12 LEDs those 12 LEDs are addressable and all of these individual banks of LEDs are in parallel, which means that they are going to all look the same. Now, it's possible that these could be wired a different way. It's possible that these could be wired so that all 12 of these were in parallel. So they were not individually addressable. They were all the same, but then one, two, three, four, five, six, we could have six individual banks that are individually addressable. There's various ways this can be wired and it's up to the designer of the LED board. You don't really get to decide this after the fact. So we won't be able to like make the front left arm be red and the front right arm be green, but we could make interesting patterns or something within these. It kind of doesn't matter though for the sake of this tutorial because basically we're gonna want them all to be the same color anyway. So let's just drag and highlight here and we're gonna choose function color and we're just gonna pick a, f a single color and hit save and voila, we've done it. Well, sort of because we need to be able to change this color and we don't want to be going into Betaflight Configurator in between each heat of the race to change the color. We need to tie it to a control on our radio. And that's gonna be the next part of the video. But before I go into that, can I just take a moment to read you a little sponsor plug? The sponsor of today's video is you. You're the reason I'm here, not NordVPN or Squarespace or uh, any of those companies. It's you. I'd like to invite you to join my Patreon. Patreon is a website where you can support me for as little as $2 a month or more if you feel like I've earned it. The amount that you subscribe at is totally up to you. You can cancel anytime. There's no commitment. Every month, a couple bucks come out of your pocket, go into my pocket and keep me doing what I'm doing. Patrons get access to my Discord server where there are a ton of helpful and friendly people, kind of like me, 
kind of person who just thinks I'm cool and wants to do more stuff like that. And also you get access to podcasts of my live streams uh, and other interviews that I do and so forth on uh, my Patreon page. Uh, if that all sounds great, then there's a link in the video description to patreon.com and you can sign up. Uh, if today's the day I've earned your support, I'd love to have you. If I haven't earned it yet, I'll keep making content. You keep watching the content and maybe that day will come. The first thing we need to do is pick a control on our radio that we're going to use to switch LEDs. And uh, I think the simplest thing to do is going to be to pick a maybe a side slider like this or a potentiometer. Um, I'm already using these potentiometers for something, so I'm going to pick a side slider, uh, but it really could be anything. It, actually, it's not true. You're not going to want it to be a three position switch because you need to be able to select between more than three colors. So you potentially could do it here with these six positions here, maybe, but really something with continuous output like a slider or a potentiometer is gonna be the easiest. Just don't bump it while you're flying. Then we're gonna set up a mixer line here and an Edge TX, Open TX. This is probably something many people already know how to do, but I'll walk through it. We're gonna press the model key. We're gonna page over to the mixers screen. We're gonna find an unused aux channel. Like here, we don't seem to be using channel seven for anything. What am I doing with channel six? Doesn't make any sense. Get rid of that. We'll use channel six. Then we're gonna go down to channel six, which isn't being used for anything. We're gonna click edit. We're gonna go to source. And then with that highlighted, we're just gonna move that control. And when we do, it'll automatically fill in that control as the source. And that's it. That's all we need to do. Once we do that, if we then look at the outputs here, we can see as I move that control that that channel is moving up and down. And if we look in the Betaflight receiver tab, we can see the same thing. Aux 2 is going up and down. Next, we go back to the LED strip and we're gonna highlight those LEDs again and we're gonna make their function be a color. That's true, that's still gonna be a fixed color. There are some dynamic things you can assign to LEDs, like you can have the LEDs go up or down with the battery uh, voltage or the maybe the RSSI, the signal strength. That's all fine, that's for a different video. We're still gonna be using a fixed color, but we're gonna have a modifier to the color. And the modifier to the color is going to be Aux 2. All right, we'll hit save there. Now at this point, we've got the LEDs changing when we move the slider, but we don't really have the exact colors that are needed for a tiny trainer race. In fact, the colors that we're getting seem kind of random. A tiny trainer race requires that you be able to set your LEDs to red, blue, green, and white for the four channels, the four video channels that they're using. Uh, and it turns out that the way the Betaflight LED strip decides the range of colors you're using is a little bit non-intuitive. Uh, basically, the way it works is you think of three of these slots in the color picker as being the bottom, middle, and top of your channel range. Uh, and then as you go through the channel range, it slides from one to the other and then to the last one. So what we need to do is we need to set the first position here to, and just double click it to bring up the, the color picker or the color setup. We're gonna set it to 00 and 255, which is red. The second one, we're gonna set it to 246, zero and 255. And the third one, we're gonna set it to max on all three, 359, 255, and 255. And then we're gonna select those LEDs and we're going to set them to the color in the middle and hit save. And then what we should see is that with the slider all the way up, we have a red color. If we come down just a little bit, we get a white color. If we come down a little further, we can get a blue color. And if we keep coming down just to about three quarters, we can kind of get a greenish color. And that technically is all you need to be able to participate in your tiny trainer race. But I'm already thinking of ways that this video could be even better. For example, could we set it up so that we had just four fixed outputs? So we didn't like bump and change our, our output to like some inner purple or something accidentally. Yes, we absolutely could. Could we set it up so that the Betaflight, Betaflight can change video transmitter channels in response to like an aux channel? So could we set it up so that a single button press changes our VTX channel and our LED color at the same time? Yes. 
and those will be amazing things for me to do in a future video. Uh, but it's late right here right now. I got to get to bed and I have delivered on the basic promise of this video, which is showing you how to set up these LEDs. And in case you're thinking, no, show me the good stuff. I just want to point out, this is exactly how Evan Turner says that all the tiny trainers do it. They just use a slider, they set the slider before the race, and they just dial in the color that they need. So if you watch this video, know that you're doing it just like Evan Turner does it. But I do think there's a better way it could be done, and I will hopefully do that in a future video. Hope you get subscribed so you don't miss it. In the meantime, if you're wondering what the hell is so exciting and appealing about this dumb little three-inch racer, I want to put a video on screen. There's a card right there that tries to make the case for you why these are so gosh darn fun and so good for practicing racing, even if you really want to focus on five inch racing. On the other hand, if you want to build one of these yourself, I did a build tutorial and I'll put that on screen as well. See you there.